Video 2.6, The Fugue Competition, 1891. The subject for the competition was written by the director of the conservatory, the successful opera composer, Ambois Thomas. The contestants were locked in little cubicles, and so they had to imagine the subject in their minds, because there was no keyboard or other instrument in their cubicle. The first step was to analyze the subject and come up with a counter subject, a melody that could play, be played with the subject. Here's uh, that two voice combination by Henri Bousset. Two first prizes were awarded for this competition, one to Busser and one to his classmate, Madeleine Jaeger. I'm pronouncing it in a kind of German way. Um, I'm not sure how the French would have pronounced it, but let's just call her Madeleine. Here's her subject and counter subject. As mentioned, Henri and Madeleine were separated in closed rooms, but because of their long and intense training, when they listened to this subject in their mind and thought about counter subjects, they came to very similar conclusions. In fact, you can play both of their counter subjects with the subject and it all sounds quite well. Things would not have gone together so well if they had not had similar understandings. Now, at this point, they have to plan out the whole fugue, and that's a complicated scheme. There's an exposition where each of four voices enters with either the subject or the answer. The subject leads to a counter subject that accompanies the answer, which leads to a counter subject that accompanies a third voice on the subject, and then a fourth voice with the answer. This leads to a series of modulations with the subject or the answer appearing in several different keys. After a while, you'll hear a dominant pedal point. That is a, a low tone originally played on the pedal board of an organ. It's usually the dominant or the fifth scale step of the key, and that leads to a grand pause. Following the grand pause, there's a stretto on the subject, several strettos on the subject and the counter subject. A stretto means, uh, well, originally there's a time difference between the entry of the subject and the entry of the answer. Well, that time distance is contracted in a stretto. It means there's a new combination that has to be found or worked out. And then near the end, there's a pedal point on the tonic or the first note of the scale, the main scale of the piece, and then a final cadence. So let's listen to Bousser's first prize fugue. The four voices are played by digital instruments imitating a bassoon, a clarinet, an oboe, and a flute. Now this creates quite a bit of color, uh, but the intent is to make each voice a little bit more recognizable since you have four voices playing together some of the time. And I will circle the 
incipit or the first notes of the subject or answer as they appear so that you can follow along with the um, kind of underlying scheme of the fugue. This really is an astonishing level of skill. Busser was a real master and went on to a great career. But Madeleine also was very, very good, maybe even a little bit better. Uh, let's just listen to her fugue, which is somewhat more complex than Busser's.
again an astonishing level of skill. This was produced, this beautiful piece of music was produced in a closed room in a period of 18 hours from about 6 in the morning to midnight. The student went in with really nothing, uh, was provided with staff paper, pen and ink, and all the experiences of years of intense and focused training. The result was really quite magical. <laughs>